Okay, thank you, uh, Mario and April. Um, we're going to move into the questions and answers session at this point. This uh, first question we're going to ha have uh, now is composting with zeolite. What methodology is being used to determine the compost maturity? So that would go to you, uh, Mario. Yeah, we use the Solvita test. Uh, so it's a respiration in jar, a commercial available re respiration method. Um, it's, it's a quick method. It's not as exact as developing a whole respiration method in the lab, but this is pretty close. And, and in this case, it gave us a very good answer on the comparison of the zeolite uh, co-composted uh, compared to the, to the regular one, to the control. Okay. So it's, it's, it's basically used, it's a respiration test that you put um, some compost and you wet it and put it in a jar. Then you put a, a pad that has a reactive, one for carbon dioxide and another in another jar a reactive for ammonia. Uh, and you close it and you wait some time and according to the respiration, you have uh, a color code that uh, gives you an answer on, on those parameters that I show. Basically ammonia concentration on the, on the head of the jar uh, and carbon dioxide, uh, they make an evolution uh, calculation uh, on the carbon dioxide. Okay. Um, and you covered a bit of this at the end of your presentation, Mario, but um, I'll ask you first to make a comment, then maybe April. Any thoughts about covered and uncovered compost piles? So what, what's the impact of covering? Covering generates uh, like a similar, like a biofilter, but this is on that top layer. Um, so you increase, I mean, there is a lot of, usually you cover with don't compost or with the straw as I show, and some, sometimes you can cover with some uh, synthetic materials um, <clears throat> and, or geotextile materials. Uh, and, and that generates an, a layer with microorganisms can take care, you, you reduce the rate of emissions, but whatever comes out goes through that filter, so microorganisms can take care of, of those emissions, you know. Um, as I mentioned, that reduces, uh, unless you are forcing air through it, uh, it reduces the exchange of air rate, of oxygen rate to inside the core of the pile. So you might have some increase in nitrous oxide and methane because you have, might have more anaerobic conditions on the core of the pile. Okay. And covered versus uncovered, April, do you have any additional comments? Uh, no, I, I mean, I think it really depends on what you're using for your cover, right? And how that's going to change your emissions will be dependent on whether you're using synthetic covers or biofilter type covers. Uh, so I think Mario pretty much covered the different scenarios. Okay. So some, something with the, the, those type of cover, Joe, can make a huge difference is an odor. Uh, one of, of the main reasons to use um, those covers is ammonia reduction, but odor in general uh, on, on those composting methods. Okay. Um, the next question is, any thoughts about turning the compost and the rate of decomposition and gas release? So I, I guess kind of restating the question, um, the more frequently you um, turn, um, how does that impact rate of decomposition and gas? April, you want to? Uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, if you turned it too much, um, you would probably slow the decomposition down a little bit, right? So they turn them fairly infrequently because um, you want to keep the right, if you were really actively composting, right, you want to have this, maintain a certain temperature within the pile and you want to maintain uh, a certain moisture within the pile, if you turn it too much, that kind of will reduce your moisture probably and your uh, temperature, which would negatively impact your composting process, I would think. Um, so obviously they, they try to turn it um, <laughs> certain time frames of moisture, temperature, et cetera, if you're really trying to actively compost it, because you want to get those temperatures hot enough right to induce 
some of the breakdown of the organic matter, but also it helps to kill weed seeds, pathogens. So if you're not reaching those temperatures, then uh, it, you're not getting the full benefit of some of the composting. And I would think if you turned it too much, you may not build up that temperature like you would want to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And the other one is a gas swap. You know, if you start turning some, you start increasing your, the, the chances of uh, increasing your methane and nitrous oxide. If you turn too much, you gas off probably a lot of carbon dioxide and, and ammonia. So yeah, I mean, you need to keep that process going anyways. You know. um, and then a zeolite question. Um, how much zeolite is used as a percent of the incoming of other material, so. Um, anyway, uh, from the most effective is around from five to 10% uh, on a wet basis. And in my study, I use 8% on a wet basis, weight, weight to weight, and um, that ended up being about 15% on a dry matter basis. Um, and that's, I choose that one uh, based on other studies, uh, and also on the economical factor, what, what the producer will be willing to pay until, I mean, you can use more and have a better effect, but it won't be economically feasible, even if with those nice results that you see at the end on the, on the quality of the compost, but it will, won't be economically feasible to do it. So 8% on a wet basis, this end up 15% on, on dry, but the range is between six and, and 12, I would say. Yeah. Um, the next question is a bit complex, but we'll go ahead and try to tackle it. Um, composting also produces VOC emissions, volatile organic compounds, which in non-attainment areas is a concern for ozone formation um, and reacts with ammonium and, and PM2.5. Um, though your studies report ammonia reductions, what are your thoughts about whether VOC would also be reduced? Um. Okay, uh, so reduction. <clears throat> well, that's when you start, um, when you need to demonstrate uh, a VOC reduction is when you start playing with the more complex composting systems, uh, like the in-vessel uh, or the force aggregated with a negative pressure that you can connect a biofilter, a designed filter that could be biofilter on a zeolite filter or a combination or even a scrubber. Uh, in that case, you can take care of many of those VOCs too. Um, so, um, uh, doing, you know, turning the compost with a compost turner uh, probably will be very difficult to, to control some of those VOCs unless you go to some of the chemical or biological amendments. Um, what application methods were used for manure spreading when the emissions were high in the spring? So in that study, uh, all the manure was applied with a spreader, so it was solid manure, and then we would immediately incorporate it with disc uh, tillage. So it was just disc into probably the top six to eight inches of soil. Okay, and then the last question we'll address today online is, um, had to do with the, the, the initial dips and in emissions that you explained on, on your one study. Um, so, you want to, again, kind of cover that a bit as, as best you can? So I thought that was a really great question. And obviously, we did not study this in detail, but this is, this is my thought process. Um, when that manure first goes out to the compost yard, especially the dairy manure, it tends to be pretty wet. And so, um, and that manure has usually been scraped up lots of times, or at least in the studies that we did. Uh, in the lot, and as you put it in the compost pile, uh, you first get kind of a flush of that ammonia right away that's out there. The manure's wet as it's drying down, it's also releasing ammonia. Um, but then you also can have some, probably some reducing conditions build up like right at the beginning when it's wetter, and then you probably are getting some of that nitrous and that methane maybe happening then. And we, have, we live in such a dry region, right? We don't get rainfall. Uh, there's no water usually added to these compost piles, so then they tend to dry out a little bit. And so I think that that initial burst is just due to the manure maybe being wet and creating conditions that are good for releasing some of those gases, and then it dries out a little bit. 
uh, and I think the emissions probably dip a little bit there, but then as you start to increase the temperature again and you start turning that compost, I think then the emissions start to go up um, as you're going through the composting process. That's the only logical way I could think to explain why you might see a little bit higher emissions that then dip and then go back up. Uh, but someone would really need to probably take the time to spend to do some chemistry and some extensive sampling to figure out exactly why that's happening. But it seems pretty consistent. Okay. Well, thank you, April and uh, Mario. Um, very thorough coverage of uh, emissions. We, we thank you for your research.